Hello, this is Brett Etheridge, founder of Dominate the GMAT, here with your GMAT tip of the week. The tip for this week has to do with data sufficiency questions, and specifically the tip is this. Take your time on data sufficiency questions. Don't jump to immediate conclusions. You know, one of the mistakes I see students often make is that they think they can answer data sufficiency questions a whole lot faster than they can problem solving questions. You know, when you think about problem solving questions, you've got this long paragraph and maybe it's talking about an airplane flying east to 200 miles an hour and one flying west to 250 miles an hour and after they travel three hours, blah, 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 right? So it's this word problem. You've got to digest the word problem and then you've got to use your scratch paper and you've got to write all the stuff out and, and you're freaking out and you think it's kind of hard to answer that question in under two minutes. But nevertheless, you know, it does take some time to do problem solving questions. But here's the reality. Just because data sufficiency questions look shorter, you can still get yourself into a world of trouble if you make snap decisions and answer these questions too quickly. At the end of the day, the math works out the same, meaning you're going to have about an hour, a minute 45 per question. Whether it's problem solving, whether it's data sufficiency, you got about a minute 45. Use it. You don't have to use up the whole thing if you don't need it, but you don't have to answer these questions in 10 seconds, which is what I think a lot of students tend to do when they see data sufficiency questions. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say this were the question. What is x? And then let's say statement number one is, you know, x plus 3 equals 18, and statement number two is x squared equals 25, right? And remember, we always draw our mock answer grid on our scratch paper so we can systematically eliminate answer choices as we make determinations. You know, in a question like this, a lot of students will kind of look at it and they definitely don't take a minute 45. They say, what is x? Uh, that's an equation. Yep, that's sufficient, right? And so once I know that's sufficient, I get rid of b, c, and e. And then they look at statement 2, x squared equals 25. Yep, one variable, that's just the square root of 25 is 5. Yep, that's sufficient. And you circle it and off you go. Here's the problem. Is that the right answer? No, it's not the right answer. Why? Well, because I missed something. And what I missed was not spending enough time, not chasing it down the rabbit hole. You know, I talk about chasing it down the rabbit hole. Take a few extra seconds, take pains, and just ensure to yourself that you haven't missed something, especially on medium difficulty or difficult questions later in a section where you know there's probably a little bit of a trap going on. It can't be that easy. What do we recognize? Certainly statement number one is sufficient, but what is x in statement number two? It's plus or minus, isn't it? x equals plus or minus 5 because x is the square root of 25, which means it's plus or minus 5, right? Because what happens if you square a negative number? It becomes positive. It's also 25. So can we definitively know what x is? No. We can't definitively know what x is in statement number two because it gives us two possible answers, right? Plus five or negative five. And so if we had taken a little extra time, if we hadn't just made snap decisions, if we had recognized that we still have the full minute 45-ish to solve a problem like this, and just because it's not a problem-solving question doesn't mean we can answer it in 20 seconds, chase it down the rabbit hole, take a few extra pains, it would have helped you to avoid a wrong answer and ultimately get the right answer. So that's it. I hope this helps. You know, pay attention, take a little extra time than you otherwise might on data sufficiency questions, and go out and dominate the GMAT.